My name is Nicole Lyon, and today I am sharing the amazing story of John Coulter, Mountain Man. John Coulter was born in 1774 in Virginia and moved to Kentucky in his early childhood. He grew up hunting and tracking in the woods of Kentucky and was eventually tapped to become a member of the William Clark and Meriwether Lewis expedition to explore the wilderness of the Louisiana Purchase and to help map the land. Using the research of Ronald England and Larry Morris, as well as David Marshall, Ph.D., I will share with you the life of the mysterious mountain man, one who faced numerous encounters with the Native American tribes and how he is credited as the first European to discover Yellowstone. There is not much known about John Coulter other than secondhand accounts as he did not record anything in writing himself. In his early life, John Coulter made a name for himself with his skills as a hunter and tracker. The qualifications to be a member of the Lewis and Clark expedition were recorded in correspondence between the two men and shared in David Marshall's book. The qualifications were, quote, Good hunters, stout, healthy, unmarried men, accustomed to the woods and capable of bearing bodily fatigue in pretty considerable degree, end quote. These qualifications fit John Coulter to a T. In 1803, he joined the Lewis and Clark expedition, but being a young man, he was rebellious, and he and other young members of the team went off to have a grand old time and got drunk, which earned them the punishment of being grounded to the camp for ten days. Shortly following this incident, John threatened to shoot another member of the team and was actually court-martialed. However, he apologized and promised he would do better. According to Discovering Lewis and Clark, he was assigned to carry important correspondence as a trusted member of the team less than a month after his court-martial. In 1806, John set off on his own and ended up falling in with a trapping group organized by Manuel Lisa. Lisa's goal was to establish positive relationships and trading posts with the Indian nations, and he knew of John's experience working and living with the various native tribes. According to David Marshall, Coulter, quote, learned Indian lore and customs, end quote, from the Crow, Flathead, and Shoshone nations, even going so far as to live among the Crow. Since Lisa wanted to begin trade with the Crow first, Coulter's experience made him a valuable asset to the group. During his time with Manuel Lisa, Coulter stumbled into the area we now know as Yellowstone. As far as can be determined, Coulter was the first European man to find his way there. However, his experience was perhaps a little less than wonderful. As David Marshall shares, quote, In the course of Coulter's wanderings, he came upon hidden fires, smoking pits, noxious streams, and the all-pervading smell of brimstone. That it received and has ever since retained among trappers the name of Coulter's Hell. End quote. This was recorded by Washington Irving, the famous writer and biographer. Also during his time with Lisa's group, we find one of the most famous stories known about Coulter, that of his harrowing flight from the Blackfoot tribe. As reported by Robert Anglin and Larry Norris in 1808, Coulter was trapping beaver with a partner, and they were confronted by a group of Blackfoot Indians. His partner tried to escape and was shot and killed, his body riddled with arrows. John was captured and the Blackfeet decided to have some fun with him. Coulter was stripped naked and told to run. Barefoot and naked, John took off running through the brush to escape, pursued by many young warrior braves of the Blackfoot tribe. After running about two miles, John managed to lose all but one of them with whom he had to fight and eventually killed using the warrior brave's own spear. He quickly resumed his run, finding shelter in the beaver den from the other pursuing warrior braves. He was able to escape his pursuers and, eating only bark and roots, walked over 200 miles back to civilization, a trip that took him 11 days. After he recovered from this trip, in 1809 he joined the St. Louis, Missouri Fur Trading Company expedition, which included the building of a fort. After multiple attacks by the Blackfeet, though, John had had enough and decided to return to civilization. He married Nancy Hooker and settled down in New Haven, Missouri, where he eventually died of jaundice in 1812, or was it 1813? 
part of the mystery of this man. John Coulter was a hero in his time and has become a legend today with people still following his famous run in various racing events throughout the country. Without any written record by the man, we have an outstanding story of persistence in the face of trials and an explorer of a landscape untouched by Europeans. He became one of the very first heroes in the American West with his narrow escapes and tales of bravery. While he was followed into the West by countless others, he remains the first. With the skills he possessed and the adventures he experienced, he should and will live on as an example of the resilience of the human spirit.